embracing your community and trying to take them, trying to show them off in other atmospheres or, or environments where what? they may not necessarily what? get them. For other people to see, I think there's power. Why, why should black people care about interracial relationships? Frederick, kick us off. Oh, wow. Okay, no. Well, I feel like black people should care about interracial relationships because uh, they're important, right? Um, it gives us an opportunity, like, I'm an interracial, interracial relationship myself. So it gives us an important opportunity to be a bridge. So we see ourselves as a bridge with so much divide going on. So we, we try to be that bridge for other people that have questions on uh, other races that, you know, uh, other races and stuff like that. So we want to just be a bridge for them. We want to allow them an opportunity to ask the tough questions and be a positive light and to be that back, that uh, I guess that backboard that they can a throw bridge to racial harmony. Yes, yes, a, a bridge to it. I mean, there's there's so much division, and in our relationships, we we try to allow our relationship to be uh, an image of what it looks like for unity, right? Unity together and coming together. And you have differences. I have differences. I'm different than you, but we can come together and have something that's beautiful. And that's our marriage. Why should black people care about interracial relationships, Juice? Uh, really, I, I'm, it's like I'm not really into like preach or um, force my belief on someone, but it's like there's just so much focus on skin color, you know, and I'm like, I feel like the focus to me, again, is just just my opinion, but I feel like the focus should be on someone's character first. And if it's if, it's, if the person's nice and you, you like you like them, then that makes sense to kind of want to be around them because they're nice people, regardless of what they look like. So, you know, for me, it just makes sense to focus on someone's character first, then someone's appearance, skin color and, and that that stuff. So. Yeah. Dr. Umar, let's get into it. Why should Black people care about interracial relationships? Black people should care about interracial relationships for three reasons. Number one, when we go outside of our community to select our mates, we undermine the importance of the traditional Black family in the lives of Black people, and in particular, Black children. If Black boys don't see Black men being committed to Black women, they may be less inclined to do the same themselves. There can be no nation without first having a strong black family and the traditional black family is under attack. And when we talk about interracial relationships in our community, we're overwhelmingly talking about black men. It is black men who marry outside of their race more than the men of every other race in this country put together as a percentage of their respective communities. 25% of all newlywed Black men in this past decade, okay, were married outside of their race, 25%. And although we have seen an increase in Black women dating outside of their race, it's only up to 12%. So interracial marriage in the Black community is overwhelmingly a Black male thing. How can we turn our backs on our women which is a form of turning our backs on our community. And without question, it represents turning our backs on our children. Working in the schools, one of the big questions I always get from black girls, third graders, fourth graders, and fifth graders is Dr. Umar, what's wrong with me? Why is it that so many black men choose to marry someone who does not look like their mother? Frederick, you said you're in an interracial relationship. Have you turned your back on the black family? No. Uh, how can I turn my back on my family? My family is a black family. I grew up in a black family. My mom is black. My dad's black. I'm black. I am inherently black. That my choice to marry my wife that isn't black does not make me less black. You know, to think that the entire black uh, community uh, is going to perish because of a decision I made. I don't think that's a very, uh, you know, that's that's a great uh that's not that's not very reasonable to say, if that makes sense. If I could push back respectfully, briefly, I would just say we have to look at the reality that black women are more likely than any other women in this country to marry later in life. They're more likely to be married much shorter than other women, and they're more likely to not get married at all. Only one out of every four black women in the United States will get married. So for a black man to marry out of his race and not say that he does not bear any responsibility for the fact that black women have such a difficult time finding a man who looks like them, 
who is willing to build a family with them to say that it is not a form of betrayal on some level, I believe is politically disingenuous. Uh, Black people, with the history we have in this country, coming from slavery, through Jim Crow, through Willie Lynch, all the way up to today, we need each other. And it's important to recognize that even when you date or marry outside of your race, the non-African that you're marrying, the white person or be the person of another culture, but particularly white people, they are still just as racist as other white people. There's this notion that when you marry or date a white person, that particular white person was more liberal than other whites. The research does not bear that out. The research shows that they are just as racist as other white people and to say that for me to say and to say that every white woman because i married a white woman every white woman my wife or my wife every white woman a white person is inherently racist i think is wrong because you're not you're not giving that person a chance to prove to you who they are like if i if if i take that notion then that means that everybody that looks at me is going to think that i am inherently racist toward them because they're a different race I give I like to give people a chance to prove to me who they are first. Then when you prove to me you're racist, I know who you are. But if you prove to me that you're you have character, you're upstanding and that you look at within uh, before you look outward, then I can roll with you. I can I can rock with you. And that's kind of how, you know, in determining when I dated my wife, I could see that she had those characteristics. And I chose one person. So I truly believe there's someone out there for everybody, regardless of what your race is. There is someone out there for you. So I wasn't the person for, I was only the person for my wife and that's who I married. Dr. Umar, does it devalue the community or the culture? It most certainly does. What it does is it reinforces stereotypes that have long been held in this society that black women are not valued Black women are not wanted and that there is something inherently wrong with Black women. And that's why they're not desired by the Black man or the white man. Without question, when you see so many well-educated and economically comfortable Black men going outside of their community to find a spouse, even though it is not openly stated, it is clearly socially and non-verbally communicated that something must be wrong with the Black woman. The Black woman is our responsibility. Juice, you've said that, you know, you're not really here to give your opinion. You're not really here to judge anybody else. Can you speak to uh, the responsibilities that Dr. Umar just talked about when he said, look, Black men have a responsibility to society. Do you not believe that? I disagree. I mean, again, it's it's not, I'm not here to please society. I can care less about what someone thinks about my decisions. I'm not here to please anyone. So again, I'm, I'm not here to like push belief or preach on, but it's like, again, I'm, I'm doing this because I enjoy being around people who are good, regardless of who you are. Just that simple with me. Right. But the question is, do you believe you have, as a black man, you have a responsibility to society in any way? Absolutely not. You know, black or white, it, I, I'm, not, I'm not born in this life to be responsible for anyone or anything. I mean, it's just my decision on how I live my life, regardless of how you feel about it. So it's not my responsibility whatsoever as a, a black man. Did you seek out a white woman? Absolutely not. Me, that's, a, that's a misconception that yep. black men seek out white women. So... Even if you, even if that's your preference, it's your business. It's like, almost like being gay. You know, that's your preference of dating whomever you want, you know? And again, that's not why I did it because I, I need a Caucasian woman. No, I'm around different people all the time. You know, again, I've seen, I'm, I'm, I'm around a, a lot of dark-skinned people who are terrible. Even my, 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 my own family members, they could be just terrible people to be around and they're dark-skinned. So I'm not, I'm not around them as much. But if they were a Caucasian, I'll treat them the same way. If you're not, if you're a bad person, I won't be around you. I, just that simple, really. Do interracial relationships affect the Black economy? That's a really deep question right there. Dr. Umar, can you give us a deep answer? Of course, interracial marriages affect the Black community. In fact, I would argue that the economic 
sabotage, the economic treason that takes place whenever a black man, especially an educated black man, an economically comfortable black man decides to abandon the black woman for a white woman, he takes with him not only his heart, but he takes his savings, he takes his education, he takes his financial opportunities, he takes his checkbook with him. Let us be honest that marriage at its very foundation is a financial relationship. Anyone who doesn't believe that only need go to divorce court and see how many people are arguing over the love that they gave the other person during the marriage. In divorce court, love is never a focus. You're focusing on assets. You're focusing on savings. You're focusing on retirement. And the Black woman and the Black community loses out on all of that whenever a Black man decides to seek a white woman's hand in marriage. You're taking from a people who don't have enough and you're taking it to another people who have already stolen so much. And what makes it even more insulting is the opportunities that put you in that economic position to be able to get married and take care of a family came from black people who died, who suffered, who struggled, who sacrificed for us to be in this position today. And for me to take my education and my income over to the white woman when there's so many black women who need it cannot be interpreted as anything other other than economic betrayal. Cedric, I see uh, you smiling. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll have, you, have you committed economic betrayal, my brother? No, no absolutely not. Because the, uh, Dr. Umar, respectfully, he's, he's saying that the black man is taking his paycheck from the black woman. But that's absolutely. also the value and the value of the black woman. There is so much strong, educated uh, black women out there that are can handle their own checks. They can pay their own money. They have uh, my two sisters are are two of them. They're two doctors. They they mm-hmm. handle their own stuff. They have their own money, and they I'm not saying that that's not the question. The, the, that's not the question. But I'm just saying, mm-hmm. like my paycheck. You're saying that the guy has. You're you're making it seem like the guy is the one that's going to have the biggest paycheck. There's 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 very plenty. There's many up. There's many. Uh, uh, scenarios where the lady brings in more of the cash. I agree. And that, and that, and there are a lot of black women that bring in a lot of cash. Like I don't That's divide true. my sisters out there. My sisters are the most powerful, beautiful, strong We're not women dividing that can them. do anything. So We're what I'm saying is on that, your money. No, no, your check, my, my brother, money. that yes. does not come to the black community. Yeah, it my, goes to white folks because your wife is white. So she gets yeah, but, your money. But, but my kid, but my kids are black. So my kids, my kids are still getting the money that you say won't go to the black community. Is that that is true? true. That is true. But it goes into a family, into a marriage that you share with a non-African woman. So no matter how you slice the pie, my brother, your paycheck goes to a white female. And that is a form of financial betrayal. Well, but, but 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 how's that possible when his kids are black? Though? He just says his kids are also black, so he goes to his children, black black people. Yes, his children are black, but why are we leaving out the white woman who's making the decisions as to how his paycheck will be spent on her? As That's well not as true. Children? That, you you don't. You so don't you're, know you and your wife though. do not sit down and make economic decisions together. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, but, but you said is, she's making the decisions. You didn't say we're with, collecting She's making them with you. Together. You're making the decisions with your white wife about your finances, correct? Yes, that, that's what it is. And your right white right. wife benefits from your paycheck, no matter how meager it might be, correct? But my white wife, my Caucasian, my uh, African-American wife, my Asian wife, whoever my wife would be would still benefit because she's my wife. That's what it's called. Exactly, that's what's exactly. Together. And the but point what is, we're making is your white wife benefits and not a black woman because you chose to leave the community to find your spouse. But you're also saying that I am the savior that's going to rescue right. all black women. It's not about the paycheck. No, like, I'm no, nobody's no, savior. No. I, I, can't, exactly. I, I can't go, I'm not, Frederick, I'm not going Frederick, there and rescue Frederick, people. Frederick, this is not about individualism, my brother. I'm not making, I'm you, a, I'm not making you a savior, nor am I making you a scapegoat. What I'm saying is that you, myself, the other brother here, and every other Black man has an obligation to look out for our sisters and our children. And when little Black girls see you walking down the street with your white wife, many of them are going to ask themselves, what is wrong with me that he did not see a Black woman as being worthy of his commitment in hand in marriage? That's the question. Interracial marriage is psychologically devastating. 
is economically devastating and it's politically devastating. Well, I guess I let's guess talk I, about the let's let's talk about the psychological devastation. Yeah. Do, do you agree with that, uh, Juice? How, how could he know exactly what a, a black you know young girl would say when she sees? a quote unquote black man with a white woman watches. Because I talk to them on a regular basis. I'm a school psychologist, a school principal. I'm also a clinician. Children are what I do for a living. So I tend to have a very good pulse on what black children are thinking. But how could they speak for all black women? That I'm not trying to play? speak for you all know what black mean? Like, children. It doesn't make any sense. But you're running away from the question. How about we answer the question as opposed to trying to change the variables of it? Do you believe that there is a psychological uh, consequence to black men dating white women or women outside of the race? I mean, I could say yes to that, but with no actual science, I really can't speak on that actual term, but maybe some young black girl may feel that way, but to, to kind of generalize all black young women that they feel this way when they see a white woman with a black guy that they feel like something's wrong with me, that's just kind of crazy, kind of just put them on that same pot that they feel this way when they see that, you know, if, if, if they were to see that. And they feel like, like you they, brothers they are marrying man. and dating outside the race more than any other men do. And sister Tammy, we have to also keep in mind that these are not just any black men off the street who are doing this. I mean, Dave Chappelle, very socially conscious. His wife is not black. Kanye West, socially conscious. His wife is not black. And then you add to that pot. Russell Simmons, socially conscious. His wife is not black. And of course, you got the Charles Barkleys and the Jalen Rose. So you're not just talking about black men working at Walmart. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You're talking about multimillionaires and billionaires who are going to leave a very powerful financial legacy that's going to go right over to white women after they die. That is so disrespectful and insulting to all the generations of black men and women, ancestors who fought for them to be in the positions to acquire that wealth. It is unacceptable. So Patrick? Tammy, uh, to, to, this, is, this is saying that we, we know what all our ancestors would say. What's, to say. what's to say that our ancestors did not exercise forgiveness? Even though they knew what was happening to this them. This is not about they forgiveness. Aren't forgiven. It's not about hating saying, white you're people. Saying, hold on, doctor. Hold I'm on, not doctor, against interracial on. marriage because I hate white people. I'm against interracial marriage because we need to build up our people, my brother. I have I know, nothing against your white wife. I can have a I great know. conversation with your white wife. And at the end of that conversation, I will respectfully let her know her husband had no business taking a woman other than one from his community as his wife. It's not about hating white women. It's about loving black women. And that's why we must protect the black family. So as I was trying to say, <laughs> before the doctor went Go off. Ahead, uh, Go ahead, Frederick. What ahead, I wanted Patrick. to say is that um, there, there are a lot of, it all depends on what, what are the conversations happening in the household. Right. When you go back to the psychological impacts, like what are the parents teaching their kids? So what are the conversations that you're having in your household, Frederick? Uh, The conversations I have in my household is that uh, we we have conversations about race. We have conversations of uh, what you do in certain situations. We have conversations about how you should judge people by the content of their character as opposed to the color of their skin. We have conversations that everyone give everybody a fair shot before you go putting judgments on people, before you put labels on people, actually take the time to speak with them, take the time to get to know them and give them a shot first. So where are these white organizations, these white women organizations for uh, for police brutality, these white women organizations for education? Um, do you believe that white women should be more involved in particularly if they're married to a black man? Um, well. I, I'm not sure what's her name, but I do um, know some older Caucasian woman that does. They speak on, you know, you know, like, <laughs> like, like, like racism and all those things. But really, I, I really can't speak on that topic too much. But I feel like I, I, I don't see the point of them really having to have that kind of free, that their, their responsibility to protect me. I could protect, I could protect myself. Um, if she wants to get involved with that kind of, you know, stuff of, you know, protesting and speak about police brutality and all these things, you know, feel free. But me personally, I just don't see the point where why why she has to you know really be involved in those things. I, I just don't see the point. Fred, and, and I think Tammy, I think um a lot of times like we want to go for the big hit and you should be marching and doing all this, which is which is all great. But I think the biggest 
things we can do is to speak up when stuff is happening, right? So I know there are many Caucasian friends that I have, my wife all included, that would speak up if they see injustice. This is where I give my guests one last chance to get their point across and to tell the people why or why not interracial uh, dating should happen or should not happen within the races. So let's kick it off with you, Frederick. Well, I, I feel like you should marry and go after and be in a relationship with whoever it is that you love. Just go after love. Uh, you choose love if that person's in a different race. Yes. If that person's in the same race. Yes. Just pick someone that's committed. Pick someone that's going to love you forever and uh, just fight for it every day, regardless of what everybody else might say. Dr. Omar, your thoughts on I would say that all Black men who are considering marrying a woman outside of our community need to think long and hard about what they are about to do and the consequences that it has for our community economically, socially, politically, and psychologically. We don't hate nor are we against any other people, but we unapologetically advocate for the best interests of our community. And that means black men married to black women. Juice. Well, um, basically it's like, what if that black man was born in an environment where there was only Caucasian women? Like, what does he do? Does he have to wait and go fly to, you know, like, how does this work? So again, to focus so much on skin color, um, black, it's, it's not the reality, my it's brother. Crazy, That's man. not the reality. Thing. Black maybe women his are environment. Everywhere. No maybe, excuse to not have listen, one, my brother. I'm in Europe right now. I'm in Macedonia, Europe right now. Ain't none of. Ain't, ain't no black women in Europe, ain't, Juice. Ain't, ain't, listen, I mean, I'm, I'm here right now. There's millions of black women in Europe. I've been all in over Macedonia. Here. Not in Macedonia. <laughs> Maybe you not can Google where are the black women. <laughs> practice <laughs> some self discipline until you find Macedonia. Sammy, you're not in Macedonia. Hell no, nah, none of us. Are here. I'm the only one that's high here, literally. You're the only yeah. black person in Macedonia, oh, right man. Now. Come on, you think I'm lying? I ain't. Playing with y'all, man. I cannot it's, wait to get a trip. It's a culture shock. It's a culture shock. Be prepared. Go ahead, Patrick, yes. what uh, I, just, I, had a que- I was just curious on a question for Dr. Umar here. He said he has two daughters. Is that correct, Doctor? Yes, sir. What if your daughters come to you and say, dad, I know your feelings, but I am falling in love with a guy outside my race. And I will say, I will always love you as my daughter. And I will always be disappointed in your decision. Ooh, that hurt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the truth hurts. That's what my dad yeah, used to say yeah. all the time. The truth hurts. He's, he's honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In today's world, to answer Tammy's question about inter- interracial relations, I do feel like that can be a bridge to uh, help mend the racial divides because there, an interracial relationship brings opportunity to change, opportunities for change. It allows for cultures what to change? necessarily. What change? The, sh- the change, been taking the white girls from the, the change. Years. Since but the, the 1967 Loving Virginia. Yeah. What change has come? There's a change. To There's a change doctor. He's about to explain it's the change really, now, Doctor. I'm, I'm gonna explain the change, right. Doctor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not trying to do an overarching change. I'm changing one person at a time. So if you take one interracial couple and you take their family, if their family is, as you said earlier, all racist or inherently racist in some kind of way, they can be they can see the love that that couple has, and that can cause those uh, wounds inside them to be healed, that can cause them to actually start looking different. So white people are going to start being racist, stop being racist because they had a conversation with you because your wife is white. No, I'm saying the families watching the love that an interracial couple have, the families of that Caucasian person. And they're going to be changed. Their political and economic values are going to change because they see you loving on a white woman. Is that what I'm I'm talking about? Their heart, their heart is going to be changed. That's where it starts from. (laughs) It starts in the heart. If you could change a man's heart, you could change your family. My brother, my brother, my brother, my brother. I'll give him that point. If you if, if you can change, change a man's, a man's heart, heart, if you, you can. can. Family. This yeah. is not about emotions. This is about power, it economic and political control of resources and opportunities. Love has nothing to do with it. Sleeping do with white girls Cedric, does not do, reduce racial tension. Cedric, do you believe it's about economic power? No. I don't believe it's about economic power. I, I believe it's about just coming together and accepting and celebrating everybody's differences and finding that middle ground where we all can live in unity and just move forward together. I asked Juice, I'm going to ask you now, what are the misconceptions that you receive from people 
because you married a white woman. A lot you, of get the miscon- you get the misconceptions. You get the misconceptions that uh, one, you only date her because she's white, or she's different <laughs> from you. You know, exactly. you, you're trying to make kids that are lighter complexion. You, you get you get the misconception that, like Doctor said, you turn your back on your community. When in fact, I feel it's the difference. I, I feel it's it's actually the opposite. You're actually embracing your community and trying to take them, trying to show them off in other atmospheres or, or environments where what? they can necessarily what? get them. For other people to see, I think there's power in seeing an interracial couple walking together in love, seeing that. I think there's power to see that we, and with so much divide and racial tension going on now, to see love and to see two people in harmony walking together together, I think that's healing for our nation. Let me ask you this. When you say it's healing for our na- our nation, um, I don't think that black people are as upset about interracial relationships as white people actually are. Well, yeah. uh, I think black people are a little more tolerable when it comes to interracial relationships. But white people, on the other hand, not so much. So how is it that you marrying a white person could change the heart of a white person i think you change it just from if that if that no here's the deal there are some people that just aren't open out in conversation they aren't open to seeing anything different than how it how they've been taught or grew up or from great grandpa told them but for the ones that are it will change them the ones that are willing to sit down and ask the questions and look and look through a different lens i feel like if we look at the other side of the bottle in anyone we can see and take a walk in their shoes we can see how they live. So, Dr. I think Umar, do you believe that uh, black people are a l- little more patient when it comes to interracial relationships, a little more accepting than white people? I would say that both groups are accepting of it, but for different reasons. Uh, black people are accepting of it because we come from a religious indoctrination that forces us to be politically colorblind. And white people are accepting of it because, as I said earlier, the only white women that black men can have are the white women that other white men don't want. Now, I'd like to see your statistics on that one, Dr. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Let's take a a quick break and come right back. We'll find out uh, what Dr. Umar is up to, what Frederick and Juice are up to uh, when we come. 